Give me a little intro there, Gomer. You're listening to the Station 71 Podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I'm joined by my co-hosts... Beth. And Brian. So, we are going to be doing uh, a lot of discussion this week. We got some news, we got some uh, Disney Cruise information, a trip report from Brian, uh, and we're going to do some more of the March magic that we've got going on. So let's dive into the news and get right into it. Looks like, first up on our news, we have a... Uh, I guess kind of a refurbish coming to Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular at Hollywood Studios. It seems that this attraction has survived the uh, fate of the chopping block that most of the studios has seen in the last couple of years for Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land. Um, but it looks like with the new theme of Hollywood Studios, we are seeing a change to Indiana Jones. The speculation is that the working studio theming of the actual stunt show is going to be removed and favored more for just an action adventure show uh that way it kind of keeps with whatever the theme of studios is now it seems that the attraction is going to be going down from 2020 to 2021 so spanning a full year of refurbishments uh very interesting i'm surprised that this one's making it through hmm yeah um i kind of am too i i don't know how much you know, like, continuing fandom there is for Indiana Jones. I mean, obviously, there's still people that like it, but, you know, I, I it's relevancy nowadays. I, I don't know how relevant it actually is, but I guess it's cool to see that they have, you know, this still there. Weren't they supposed to be making, like, a newer movie soon, too? I think the last one met with such awful reviews that they probably scrapped that. Well, hmm, maybe. at the end of this article, it says that the new version is set to debut in the summer of 2021 uh, in kind of conjunction with the scheduled release of Indiana Jones 5 in theaters. Oh, yeah. I, well, because I thought that the whole deal with uh, The Force Awakens was that Harrison Ford would come back to play Han Solo if they did another Indiana Jones movie. Like, I mm, believe so that was part to, of uh, it. trick him into it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, you uh, you hate playing Han Solo, but we'll give you another indie movie. <laughs> that seems so backwards, but all right, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, as sad as I am to kind of see that they're taking out the working studio theme that Hollywood Studios used to have part of the show, I guess, you know, it doesn't really make sense for it to have that part. But I just, I feel sad that they're... They seem to be removing all of the guest interaction in these types of shows. I wonder if they'll keep, if they'll find a way to keep some of the guest interaction in this one. Um, yeah, I, I feel like there's really not much they can do, but I wonder if the, they will find a way to do it. Well, so, Brian, you've seen the new show, the Flights of Wonder show, right? Yes. Do they do any sort of guest interaction like they used yeah, to? Yeah, it's still interactive. I would say it's not as much. But, you know, they still have the have someone stand up and have one of the birds come out to them and stuff. They don't do the dollar bill trick anymore, which is weird because I thought that was, like, everyone's favorite. But, you know, yeah. it, it's still interactive. I would say it's less so, but definitely still interactive. Okay, well, that gives me some hope. So... Next up, we have uh, Wonders of Life is officially closed down and construction is beginning on the new play pavilion. It looks like they walled off the Wonders of Life pavilion, uh, at least the walkway to it, and they're starting to break ground on this. We talked about this a couple weeks ago for anyone curious. Um, it looks like they're going to be revamping that section for a new entrance and a new interactive pavilion in Epcot. Um that feels really soon after they made that announcement. <laughs> hey, that's good. That was, I'm glad they're jumping on it. Yeah, I mean, it's good that they're they're rolling with it, and I'm happy about that. It just 
I don't know, something feels so weird about that. Like, I don't think I've ever heard of an announcement for Disney come out and then, like, the next week they were working on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, last up, uh, kind of an interesting story here. <laughs> um, a mermaid school is going to be offered at several Disney World resorts. Guests ages four and older can take part in an hour-long class where they'll be fitted with a swimmable tail and led through activities, teaching them how to swim in a pool like a mermaid. Um, it looks like it's going to be offered at Art of Animation, Caribbean Beach, and Disney's Yacht and Beach Club. Classes are $50 a person plus tax, which isn't horrible, and mm -hmm. open uh, mid-March, and you can book that through the 407 WDW Play number. Yeah, this it's interesting. Uh, I think at least the resorts that they chose, it seems kind of relevant. Mm -hmm. Like water related slash art of animation having the little mermaid rooms. My question is, is there an age limit? I can't imagine that there would be. It's just really interesting because they, they always seem to have an age limit. And this one just says four and older. Mm. Honestly, yeah. I'm surprised they're letting guests that young do this because of the risk of them being able to swim or not. Yeah. Like, have you ever tried to, like, just play around and, like, put your feet together and, like, swim like a mermaid? Like, that's difficult. It's hard for me to believe Have you, Brian? You. Well, I mean, <laughs> like, everyone's, uh, or maybe, what, is no, a dolphin better? Have. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's Brian, that's... if you want to be a mermaid, you can be a mermaid. <laughs> okay, no one's like judging you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just curious as to... Man, like they better have a lot of lifeguards on duty for this event because I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people struggling. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it'll be interesting. I uh, I would love to walk by this class happening for sure. Yeah, I I kind of want to see this happening too in <laughs> like a weird way. Oh. Uh, so that said, I guess we can start diving into our topic this week. Um, diving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, bad pun segue. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Brian, who just got back from his Disney cruise. I'm so excited to hear about this and hear what you have to say. Yeah. So um, I guess first off, I'll say that it was a very interesting feeling because like for the past three years living in Florida, you know, going to Disney World isn't really a vacation to me anymore. So having this like Disney trip actually coming up and like being excited for you know, the, the planning of it and just, it, you know, of it coming up was, was, was exciting and I haven't really felt that in a long time. Uh, at the same time right now, we just got off the ship yesterday uh, as of us recording it tonight and I'm experiencing that, that Disney hangover that I haven't really experienced in a long time either so that's kind of the downside but uh yeah all in all it was really great i've got a lot of stuff here that um, i'm gonna try to go over kind of a trip report slash review of it um but yeah so me and my wife took a seven night cruise uh it was a western caribbean one on the disney fantasy uh leaving from port canaveral uh, we took stops in Tortola, St. Thomas, and then Castaway Key, Disney's private island. Um, and as I go through this, I'm going to say I went on two Royal Caribbean cruises in the last two years or so. So I feel like I have a pretty good comparison as to, you know, what a, 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 I guess a normal cruise would be like uh, to compare the stuff that Disney did good at um i'm gonna say just right off the bat uh the cruise was incredible i really enjoyed my royal caribbean cruises too but aside from one probably one minor thing that i'll get into later uh some stuff royal caribbean did just as good as disney i would say but there was nothing that I thought that they did better than Disney. And there were so many things about the Disney cruise that I thought was better than Royal. So, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, it was, I had 
very high expectations going into this and they were met and then exceeded. So just straight off the bat, I'll, I'll get into it at the end about, you know, about who I think it's worth it for and if it's worth it and everything, but just all in all, it was fantastic. I should, before you get started on this, this is a topic that we've gotten suggestions for a couple times. Um, I know a while back, one of our listeners, Juliet, had asked about it. Um, that's the one that we specifically have saved in here, but we've had this question asked a lot. So I'm really happy that you got to go on it. I'm and very you can happy just, like, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you are. And I also have to say, when we set up this call to like start recording the podcast, I could tell that you were in like that like post Disney like depression <laughs> bubble <laughs> vacation thing because the second you got on you were like hey yeah. <laughs> it was just the way you said it I was like oh no and it was like and this morning was the first morning you know that I woke up and I wasn't on the boat so that was kind of kind of sad but uh anyways I'll get into all the good things um first off arriving at the terminal um okay first off I live 30 minutes away from Port Canaveral, so that was already super convenient for me. But arriving at the terminal, Disney did just an incredible, incredible job. I can't even put this into words. Royal, I went um, on a Royal cruise out of Fort Lauderdale and out of Port Canaveral. And I know, first of all, that Port Canaveral just in itself with the stuff that isn't controlled by the cruise companies, like they are a, a lot more convenient and set up. I felt like a lot better with like getting guests through uh, than Fort Lauderdale was. But even on top of that, Disney went well and above what Royal did. Um, so when you first get there, there's, you know, cast members taking your suitcases and everything, um, directing you where to go. There's an initial security where you just go through, you know, and they check your ID and everything. Uh, you go to the actual, like, terminal security where you go through the bags and the metal detector, or they, sorry, where they take your bags through and you go through the metal detector and everything. Um, and then you are in the Disney terminal at that point. Uh, once we got into the Disney terminal, all the cast members are there, and this part of the check-in was just absolutely amazing. They have a row of a, a counter with um, cast members working at it, and there were probably at least 25 cast members at this counter. Every spot was filled up, and they were checking people in. We literally walked through security. They, a cast member took us up to another cast member that was working at the check-in desk, checked us in, took our pictures, gave us our key to the world cards. That took like three minutes. And then we got in the line to actually get on the ship. So at this point, I think part of this was us showing up at a good time, but also Disney just doing an incredible job handling it. But we showed up right as they were allowing boarding onto the ship. Um, and we stood in line for maybe five minutes uh, getting on the ship. And the only reason that that happened was because they have a like where you take the picture opportunity beforehand. And they had too many people on the actual like uh, gangway onto the ship. And that was the only reason we had to wait. But all in all, from the time we got to the terminal, like by the time we got out of the car at the terminal, we were on the ship in 20 minutes. So that's through security, through boarding, through everything, 20 minutes. And it was, like, so cool. Because uh, I remember, especially on Royal, they did a decent job at Canaveral. But, you know, it probably still took 45 minutes to an hour for us to get on the boat. And the way Disney handled this with all the cast members helping you out was just above and beyond. So it really, really started off the cruise on a great note. Nice. Yeah. Um, so let's see, after that we got onto the boat, and this was really cool, as you're walking into the ship, they have a cast member standing there, and they check your, your Key of the World card that you've gotten, um, and they, uh, they have like eight other cast members standing in a row, like when you first walk onto the ship, 
and they announce you over a speaker. They'll say like, here's the so-and-so family, welcome to the cruise and everything. And all the other cast members clap for you. And it's just like a really cool way, again, that Disney is like just going above and beyond to make you feel special as you're walking onto the boat. Hmm. Um, but it's cool. So you come out and you come out into the ship's main atrium, which is it's like a three-story opening in the middle of the ship. And it's where they did a lot of the... Um, uh, like some of the entertainment things and everything, but it has like the you know the the typical like s- s- cruise ship winding staircase that goes up the floors and everything. But uh, really beautiful little area. Um, has the little Minnie Mouse and what it was it like the what they call it the flapper costume like um is is the statue when you walk on this ship and everything. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice. One thing too that I really noticed that I liked was that a lot of the floors on the the main areas of the ship were marble instead of them being like carpeted on most of the royal cruises that I was on. So I thought that was another neat little touch that Disney went above and beyond on. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I have a little section here just to kind of go over the cruise detail. So again, I went or we went on uh, the Fantasy, which... I think is it's one of Disney's uh, bigger boats as of now. I know they've got two. The two original ones are, are a little bit smaller now. The Fantasy and I forget. I think I'm going to say it's the Wonder. I'm not very knowledgeable on Disney cruise stuff. Um, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah or it sounds the, right. Yeah, or the, or the two bigger ones. So uh, they are 14 deck ships. Uh, they each have three main restaurants and two additional uh, uh, dining restaurants. I'll get into that a little bit later, too. Um, on my, I don't know about the other ones. Again, this is just about the fantasy mainly. Um, they have the Aqueduct, which is like their water roller coaster. It's really similar to Crush and Gusher at Typhoon Lagoon. It's a little bit less intense, but it's pretty cool because... When you first get on it, it actually like kind of swings out like over the edge of the ship and then back onto it, which is a neat little view and makes it a little bit more exciting, but uh, it's pretty cool. They have uh, the main pool area, and of course they have a Mickey-shaped pool in it. And then they have what they call the funnel vision, which is like the big screen that they project up there. And throughout the day, they'll do different entertainment stuff, but they're almost always showing a Disney movie on that screen throughout the day. So it's really cool. You can go out there and sit out by the pool and then watch a movie. Uh, aside from that, there's like a couple of like little small waiting pools for toddler around the main pool. And then they've got little like splash pad areas. Uh, they've got one uh, like Finding Nemo themed and then one like a Donald Duck themed one. But uh, there is also a large adults only area. And this is going to kind of get into one thing that I was worried about going onto this that I, I, they did such a good job of it. I was really worried that, you know, a lot of this stuff was going to be themed or like not themed, but made for families with small children and catered really specifically to children and stuff. Um, that was 100% not the case. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that if you are, Maybe not even a Disney f- fan per se, but you're just a, a young couple or a couple that doesn't have kids or it, it's it's great because they do such a great job at like separating the adults from the kids if you want to. If you're a family, there's plenty of family areas where everyone can hang out, but there are so many areas on that ship that are set aside just for adults. One of the, the pool decks is set off set aside only for adults and it has its own set of hot tubs its own pools uh you know areas to lay out and like it's a really big part of the ship and there's other stuff throughout the ship too there's plenty of bars that are um you know that are adults only obviously uh but one big thing too and i'll touch on this a little bit later but there was so much adult entertainment and like adult only activities throughout the day and when we went on Royal, they had a lot of stuff at night that was just for adults, but it was really only at night. Disney did stuff like seriously from 
probably like 10 in the morning through 2 a.m. that was set aside that was adults only. So I would say if, if you're, you don't have kids or you're, you're worried, if you're, even if you're, uh, you know, you have a family, but you're worried like, oh, you know, I'm going to have to do stuff with the kids all the time. We're not going to be able to go off and do our own things. Do not worry about that at all. There is so much stuff for just adults to do on this boat. So just some more, kind of some more ship details. Uh, there was the Walt Disney Theater, which was their main theater that they held the, like the big entertainment shows at each night. They have uh, a smaller theater, which was the Buena Vista Theater. And it did some, some smaller shows and stuff. But the other cool thing is that it showed movies throughout the day. And a lot of them were new releases. And some of them were even things that are in theaters right now. And it wasn't any additional cost to see. Like, uh, I think they did a couple shows of Captain Marvel. What? And, yeah. And then they, they had um, a couple other, like, recent. Like, I know they showed Mary Poppins Returns and Christopher Robin, which I think those are out now. But, you know, they're they're recent releases but there was stuff you know throughout the day that they showed there there was always a movie going on uh so i thought that was really cool you know they you know for stuff like captain marvel they probably could have charged for that and people would have paid it but they included it in the price so that is really cool wow yeah yeah that's super cool especially if like you have any intentions to see those movies like do it while you're on a cruise ship and for free Mm -hmm. Uh, heck yeah yeah did it run in like all day long like throughout the night or was it just during certain hours do you know no it was just through certain hours um i guess one thing i should probably touch on real quick too before i get too far uh i don't know if any of y'all have been on cruises uh but if you go on one they usually have like a little navigator thing like a sheet of paper that they hand out that have activities listed throughout the days you know and, and where they're held at and everything um disney We'll give you those if you ask for them, but they really push everybody to use the Disney Cruise Line app, which is kind of like a, you know, the electronic version of that. Uh, It worked pretty well uh, for us. There were a couple of things that, you know, could have been a little bit better, but all in all, it was really good. So uh, I guess to answer your question, they only showed it at certain times throughout the day, but, you know, it was always like you could check the navigator to see when it was. So question since you said they have an app um and we we always bash on the parks app worse or better i'm gonna say better it had a couple hiccups Um, i'm not you know it wasn't perfect it um part of it i think is just it being a disney app and there's always seems like there's some little bug going on in it the other thing too is that you're on a cruise ship, so the majority of the time you don't have cell service. Ah, um, uh, yeah. The cool thing, though, is that and I don't know exactly how it works, but Disney has, I guess, their own service that allows you to just use the app. So you didn't have to be connected to your cell service or pay for the Wi Fi on the ship you could still access the app and have it update uh, even if you didn't have internet access. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, nice. At the same time, though, I feel like that kind of led to a couple of the hiccups with it, not wanting to update sometimes and everything. But all in all, I think, you know, Disney had a a good solution, um, you know, for for that problem, for for them trying to push using an app when you might not always have internet service. So... Uh, I give it. I give it an eight and a half out of ten. It was. It worked fairly well. Um. So I guess other things on the ship. There's a you know a number of different lounges. Uh, you know where they do different entertainment and activities throughout the day. Uh, a bunch of bars around the pool. Uh, in different areas of the ship. There, uh, oh, one thing that I love too is just the art on the ship. Um, obviously, it's it's Disney art, but a lot of it is, it's like really really subtle Disney art. You know, it'll, it's some of it was like concept drawings, but it wasn't. Some of it was like it seemed like so early. It wasn't even like you wouldn't even probably notice it was Disney concept art if it was not on a Disney cruise ship. Uh, but it, it was it was really cool stuff. Um, 
obviously like it would be cool you know you just go up a random staircase that we hadn't gone through yet on the cruise and like seeing the new picture and go oh look at that um just really really cool stuff um and then one last thing that i'm going to talk about for a little bit is the spa that they have on board which uh <laughs> they also call the census spa and in particular i'm going to talk about uh what they call the rainforest room so my wife actually found out about this like a couple weeks before we went on the trip and told me about it and it sounded really cool so we ended up deciding to do it uh the rainforest room is it's an additional cost thing that you can pay for either before you get on the cruise or after you get on it but what it is is it allows you access to this uh kind of exclusive area of the spa and you can either buy single day passes or you can buy a pass that lets you get on it for for the entire cruise whenever you want we opted to do it for the entire cruise and i think this was probably our favorite like additional cost thing that we did on the cruise ship and it was well worth it so i'll say it was it was two hundred dollars for both of us to do it and that was for seven days um what they do is you come in you go to the spa and you, they give you a little sticker that you put on key of the world card and when you get there you show it to them that you have to pass they give you like a robe and they give you a like three different choices of these salt scrubs of different scents that you can get. Uh, so then you get to go into the actual rainforest room. So the rainforest room has uh, a sauna, two different steam rooms, uh, like I think it was four or five different aromatherapy showers, which was really cool. It would uh, it had like different types of, of shower heads in each one. And obviously each one was like a different scent and you'd go in there and you'd like push the button and it would do different, uh, like themed showers, I guess you would say. Uh, for example, one was like, uh, rainforest waterfall, which is really cool. So you go in there and it would like spray a scent out and it smelled like you were in the rainforest and it had like a hot shower that felt like rain on top of you, but then it also had like this cold waterfall shower that like poured on you at the same time so and then let me see what they have they had like uh like a cold mist one that you could do too with a I can i forget it was like a minty kind of smell they added to it but those were really cool um they had two like private hot tubs that you could only get to if you were in this area that uh it was really cool. They were like laid down hot tubs, uh, if that makes sense. They were like shaped where you would lay down and then like support your legs and your back and everything. And it was on this little private lookout deck, which was really nice because it was like you were away from everybody else. You just in this one little room and it looked directly out over the ship. Uh, so that was nice. But I think the thing that we got the most use out of while we were here, where they have these ceramic tile what they called sunbeds. So what it was is it's basically, it's just like a curved heated uh, like chair that you lay down in. And we used those so much on this trip. It was so great. Uh, so we ended up going to the rainforest room every day of the trip except one. And that was just because we were so busy doing other stuff, but it was great. We would you know, get up early and do stuff. And then around about three or four, we would get kind of tired. So we would just go there chill out in the rainforest room, go take a nap on one's little heated chairs, uh, and then, you know, be ready to go to dinner and like do the entertainment stuff after that. So it was, it was really great. If you're going on a, on a cruise, I would say do the rainforest room. It is such, such a good add on. <laughs> So you finally got to do your census spa? Yes, it, kind of like a mini taste of it. I didn't do any of the like actual massages or anything like that that you could do with the spa, but the rainforest room was was really awesome. And I, I mean, I think it was a really good price. When you know we did the cost, it was you know less than fifteen dollars a day for us to do it. So it like 
it, it's not bad at all. Nice. So, uh, I guess the next section I've got here is dining. So, I'll just say right off the bat, the dining on the boat is incredible. It was better than Royals for sure. And I think Royal had really good food too, but Disney just did it one step above, if not two. Like it was, it was just in every way better, like quality amount, like quality of food you got, the variety you got, it was just absolutely incredible. So the way that Disney dining works on the boat is that instead of going to one dining room that just kind of like rotates menu each night, like most other cruise ships, there's actually three different themed restaurants that you rotate through throughout the cruise. Um, and you stick with your same server and assistant server like you normally do on a cruise ship. Uh, they follow you to each restaurant each night. So they really get to know you, you know, know kind of like the stuff you like. If you have dietary restrictions or anything like that, you know, they... They catch on very quick and they are, uh, you know, they know it's, for example, like my server was just incredible. You know, I think I got a, I, I was joking around with my wife. I was like, I, at some point in the day, if not multiple times, like I had a steak at one point in the day, it, whether for like breakfast, lunch, dinner, I had it. And, uh, you know, really quickly my server learned like how I like my steak and everything and learned that I was getting a steak like add it on almost every night because there's no cost. Uh, so, you know, it was like, <laughs> he's like, steak, you want medium? Yes, yes, yes. And just like, you know, so they did a great job. Uh, but the the restaurant theming was just incredible. Absolutely what you would expect from Disney. Uh, the first one that we started out is called Animator's Palette, and it's pretty cool. It is, it's themed after Disney animation. Uh, they have screens set up that rotate through like different Disney concept art uh, and everything's like artist theme like the, the the little touches like the butter knives are shaped like paint brushes uh, and just stuff like that and it was cool it was probably the the least fancy of the of the three restaurants but I think I enjoyed it the most because of how interactive it was uh, so because they had the screens that would rotate through the different animation, I guess that allowed them to do other cool things too. The biggest one was that, uh, the first night they had, it was basically like turtle talk with crush that rotated around to the different tables. So they would have some guy come on that, uh, you know, was, was, was being crushed and would like talk to the guests and like interact with them, get them to do stuff. Like he started, like he got the restaurant do a wave at one point. Uh, you know, and he would just sit there and joke around and go back and forth with the guests. So that was just a really cool touch that Disney did well. Uh, one of the coolest things, though, was on the last night of the trip, they do this thing where you come in and you, like, they give you a piece of paper and it's, you're supposed to create a character. So they, like, give you a section to, like, draw the character's head, the torso, the arms, the feet, the legs, everything. Uh, and you turn it in right before the uh, your server takes your order. Well, they take all those and scan them in, I guess. And at the end, they have this really cool, like, interactive Disney montage where, like, the character that you draw uh, gets put into the animation and, like, interacts with the characters through it. So it's really cool because as you're sitting there, you can, like, watch the show. And it'll be like, oh, look, hey, here's mine coming up. And, like, you'll see your character that you drew like interacting like mickey mouse or something on the screen doing something so that's really cool it, it's just really good just one of, there's so much stuff that is just like you know like we always say like disney doesn't have to do this but they do it and it takes it one step further and it's just they knock it out of the park um so the other two restaurants are kind of like the fancier what you would probably expect like a fine dining on a cruise ship uh, one of them is Enchanted Gardens, and it was probably my least favorite themed, but it I, it was still very good. Uh, it was just like uh, like a just garden type <laughs> theming, I guess. Uh, but they it still had like cool interactive elements to it. There were these flowers that were like hung from the ceiling above each table, 
as you slowly watch like throughout the night they would like open and bloom and then the lights like around the top that was supposed to be like the sky would change colors and everything just a neat little touch from that uh and then the third one was called royal palace and it was just disney princess themed uh very heavily like cinderella themed but they had uh different mosaics around the the restaurant that uh you know showed the different disney princesses and scenes from the movie but it was really really nice uh again i, I like the animators palette just because it was interactive and everything but all three restaurants were just very very well themed so aside from the three that are included with your cruise there's also two like signature dining options that you can uh, pay an additional cost for we didn't end up doing them uh, but the people that we actually sat with did and uh, they said it was incredible i've heard really good reviews from those so uh, one is palo and the other is remy i think they're both like french maybe one of them is french and one of them is italian themed food but uh, supposedly they're really good. I've heard good things about Palo, but obviously I haven't been on a Disney cruise, so I can't say anything. <laughs> uh, another neat thing too, it, again, it was just like something that, you know, Disney, we think went the extra mile for, uh, so me and my wife were sat with two other couples that were our age uh, for dinners and we were like we were sitting there talking with them about it and we we're just like you know th this is probably not a coincidence like I, we, we feel like Disney really like went through and tried to like you know put people together that would you know so because it was like I, I, it's there probably weren't a whole lot of like mid to late 20 year old couples on the boat but you know the three of us got set together so we thought that was pretty cool that it looked like Disney tried to do that on purpose, so it was nice. I've heard that they do do stuff like that. Like, you said that they match you, like, you eat with the same people all the time, yes. right? So, yeah, they definitely probably do something like that, I'd imagine. Hmm. Yeah, because I can't imagine how awful it would be to get sat with, like, a bunch of little kids if that's not the type of cruise you were after. Right. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, um... Let's see, so like pretty much any other cruise ship, they've got a, a main buffet, uh, and this one was called Cabana's, and it was kind of like loosely Finding Nemo themed. Uh, it was it was basically just like tropical themed, but then there were a couple like, like there was a, a Nigel statue outside of the restaurant, and they had like the seagulls and places over, and then they had this big uh, uh, like Finding Nemo themed mosaic mural in it. But it wasn't really, like, very, like, and I guess another thing on, on the cruise, like, there were very few places where it was really, like, in-your-face Disney. Like, a lot of it was very, very subtle Disney theming, which was, in a, in a way, kind of cool. So, um, so there's also, like, quick service counters that are operating all day with a couple different things that you can eat. Uh, and then there was a place called Sweet on You, which was kind of like a mini Main Street bakery uh, that had like special desserts and like gelatos and ice cream that you could get for an additional price. Uh, we, we got a couple of snacks from there and they were good. You could also just go up to some, they had the little like quick service ice cream machines throughout the, the cruise too that you could get for free. But uh, Dole Whips. They had Dole Whips and they also had rum dole whips and if you got a rum dole whip you had three different options for rum that you what? could do they had like a just a, a regular you know like unflavored rum you could get a vanilla rum or you could do a spiced rum and i oh got the my gosh yeah i got the vanilla rum one and it was really really good that sounds really good um <laughs> yeah uh oh so another nice touch for the germaphobes out there is that when you go into the buffet like on a lot of cruise ships they usually just have someone out there with like like a hand sanitizer thing like squirting in your hands disney had like multiple like hot water hand washing stations set up for the buffet so 
that's another nice little thing. You don't have to worry about, you know, all the kids running around with nasty unwashed hands, touching all the food. They pretty much make everyone that comes in there wash their hands. So that was nice. Uh, and overall, I just say like the food was great. There was a lot of options. Uh, if you had a dietary restriction, they, you know, your servers very quickly wanted to, to find that out to make sure that they could, you know, if they needed to offer suggestions or anything like that. Uh, they had a good variety of vegetarian options. I would say for, for each dinner, there were like four or five main courses usually. And then there were always two vegetarian options and they would also, I like, I think one of, uh, the girls that ate with us was vegetarian. She never came out and said it, but it seemed like she was always ordering vegetarian stuff. And a couple of times, like she, she had asked if, you know, she could substitute something and you know, they were very accommodating for that and everything. So I would say if you have dietary restrictions or, or you, you know, you're vegetarian or vegan, like they're definitely going to hook you up. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, so I'll get to the, the one thing that I said that maybe, maybe Royal did better. And this is kind of just an opinion thing. Um, I don't necessarily think so, but Disney does not offer an all inclusive drink package like most other cruise ships do. Yes. Uh, that being said, they offered some like beer and wine packages. It wasn't like you would get unlimited beer and wine. You could buy like, uh, yeah, I think you could just like buy you know, six packs and stuff at a time. Or I think they had like a, a refillable mug that you could do like X number of times or whatever, but they don't have an all-inclusive drink package. Uh, that being said, me and my wife were both extremely surprised at how affordable the drinks were on the cruise. Really? Yes. Like like Disney World prices? No, like better. Really? We, I, we were so surprised because uh, the last Royal Cruise I went on, I did not get a drink package. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just, I don't drink that heavily. So I was like, I'll just, you know, buy drinks. And, you know, those were on average like 12 to $14 every time I got a drink on a Royal Cruise without having the package. Most of the Disney drinks were less than eight dollars and that included a 15 percent gratuity oh wow some of them were even cheaper a couple of them were more like if you went and got like a signature mixed drink at one of the restaurants or something like that like that was usually around ten dollars but like uh a long island iced tea was seven dollars with a 15 percent gratuity added to it so just to give you an idea it's very it's it's extremely affordable hmm okay cool yeah you know, yeah, we, we joked around like, you know, we used to live in Atlanta and going out and drinking in Atlanta every night was like, or like the, not, the nights we go out and drink in Atlanta, it was far, far more expensive than that. And it was like, we thought being on a cruise ship, it was going to be way, way more, but it was, it was not at all. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that sodas are included at no additional cost. That's usually... Uh, a package you have to add on a Royal Cruise, and I assume on Carnival too. So that's cool that Disney included that too. Um, but aside from the restaurants, the bars were were very cool and very well themed. They had uh, one section of the ship that held the majority of the bars, and it was called Europa. And there were a number of different bars, and they were all themed after a different part of Europe. So like when you first walked in, the first one was called La Piazza. And it was a like an Italian carousel, which was pretty cool. Like the center of it looked like the carousel, and it had like the lights and everything going around the top. Uh, it had a Irish pub. It had another one called uh, Ooh La La, which was uh, like French themed, and it was the like relaxing piano bar. Uh, when you walk through the like the section where all the bathrooms were was like. Uh, Spanish architecture themed and then when you went through that the last one that you got to was called the tube and it was like the main big bar there but it was, it was pretty cool it was themed after like the uh, the London subway 
Uh, and it also had like a stage in there that they did a ton of different entertainment too. But it was really cool because, you know, it was is cool to see Disney putting that much work into the theming, and it, you know, and it's something that's not like Disney IP themed. So definitely still, you know, good theming on that end. Nice. Um, so I think probably the coolest part and what really really set the cruise above the other ones I've been on is the entertainment the boat so first off i just want to say all the musicians that did like the live music at the bars or just it did they would set people up at different areas of the ship just to play music and everything they were all outstanding just like absolutely incredible obviously extremely talented uh so disney did a great touch with that uh, on top of that, you've got a lot of the stuff that like you, you normally do on the cruises, the different activities they have where you can go to the different bars or different lounges and they'll do stuff like the trivias, the game shows, uh, you know, karaoke, that kind of stuff, towel folding. Um, uh, one thing that we did that was pretty cool was uh, the animation classes. I think we ended up going to like three of these. So you come in there and they would uh, they would show you like, a video and a lot of the times it was with they actually had Walt like explaining animation processes and stuff uh, and it was pretty cool so you'd watch a little a little short video and then every day they would have uh, you know one of, one of the cast members come up there and like walk you through a Disney animation so like you would get to draw different characters or like different scenes uh, so that was pretty cool it was you know something that it's always cool to go and like do something entertaining but you're actually learning stuff so we really enjoyed that yeah i really miss those classes being at hollywood studios i know they still do them at i think art of animation and maybe another resort or two but i always thought those were super cool it like tricks you into thinking that you're an artist Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) um but like i said before there was so much adult exclusive entertainment like a lot of the the classes, the, the animation classes you go to were for adults only. A lot of the trivias you would go to were for adults only and everything. So it was, uh, you know, definitely a lot to do for adults. Um, Did you go to any of the trivia? Yes. Was it extremely competitive? Yes. <laughs> so, and it was cool because there was a decent amount of, you know, of, of Disney trivia ones set up. Um but, you know, they had stuff that wasn't Disney, too. You know, they they did a ton of different, like, they did different decades of music. Okay, they did, cool. They did, you know, movie trivia and, like, not just Disney movie, just movie trivia, like, general trivia. They had all kind of different theme trivia, so that was fun. Um, they had a couple of different ones that were called Ultimate Disney Trivia. Um I was very surprised at how difficult they were. Some of the questions that they asked were like that you I don't feel how anybody could have any way of knowing like if they weren't working at Disney Company since its opening. Like it was insane how difficult some of it was, but <laughs> all in all it, it was a lot of fun. Um yeah. We did probably, geez, like six or seven different trivias. I, we always had a lot of fun with that, so we tried to go to a lot of those. Um, let's see, they had different, you know, like exercise classes you could go to for free and everything. We didn't take part in any of those. <laughs> um, exercise on vacation? Yeah. I went to the gym one time, and I was like, why did I do that? And then I didn't. That does not sound like a vacation. <laughs> No. Uh, um, one of my favorite things that we did was they had what they called the Midship Detectives Agency. And this was a scavenger hunt that was kind of a mix between like Pirates League and Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom that they did on the boat. But it was really cool. You would go and you get a little card like you kind of do with Pirates League um, and we give you different clues. But the, the thing that I really liked was that there were actually like two different storylines that you could do. Uh, we only did one of them, but they had one that was involving the Muppets, and obviously that's the one that I picked that we did. <laughs> but it was really cool. So it's like you have to go um, to different areas of the ship, and at different places they have like the interactive art. 
and you go up there, you hold the card up and you have to do different things. And basically you're trying to solve a mystery of who stole all these props from the Muppets. So like, as you go to the different places, you, um, you know, you, you like cross people off that you find out clues about. And it was actually like kind of challenging to do. So me and my wife had a lot of fun with it. Um, it took probably like a little over an hour, I would say, to, to run through the whole thing. And that was with us moving pretty quick. You, you know, if you really stretched out and, and just took your time, you could probably, you know, do it over a couple hours. Or, you know, even if you want to do it over a couple of days as you did it, you could do that too. But it was really cool. The, um, you know, the little interactive elements with it were, were nice. And it also like brought you to areas of the ship where you would see like little subtle Muffets theming and stuff. So that was, that was really neat too. Uh, let's see, they had you know, a number of like the game shows that they put on. Uh, <laughs> one of the funny ones, uh, they have Silent Disco. We didn't end up doing this. We kind of saw a little bit of it, but we didn't actually participate in it. But I don't know if you ever heard this. Apparently this is a thing I'd never heard of before. But what they do is they, they go and they have set up at one of the bars with the dance floors. Um, you come in, they hand out headphones, and apparently they have it on like three different channels that you can tune into that's playing completely different music, and they're not playing any music over the stereos. So it was, Silent disco? Yes. So when you go in there, like you've got people just dancing to different beats because they've got headphones on playing different music, and everyone's just... Oh my God, I'm sorry, like but that is so cringy to me. <laughs> like I've seen it at festivals around town here and I just I'm sure it's fun but I just I do not have the self-confidence for that oh yeah yeah we didn't do it all of the cast members were like even if you don't do it you should come and just watch <laughs> but yeah we, we didn't participate in that I'm looking at pictures of this because I didn't believe that this is a thing oh, and a oh thing. my gosh it's a thing I mean I'm <laughs> sure it was like primo like people watching though oh yeah <laughs> Now, none of our listeners want to do silent disco <laughs> on the cruise ships. Hey, you know, we're going to see these people again. If you want to do the silent disco, do silent disco. Yeah. Um, they had one event that was pretty fun. It was called Jack Jack's Incredible Diaper Dash, and it was basically just like a baby race where they set up lanes and people brought their babies that couldn't walk yet, and they had like a bracket set up to see which one could crawl across this <laughs> track the fastest. That's uh, that pretty was fun. Actually, hilarious to watch. So, highly recommend that. Uh, on top of that, you've got you know usually cruise ships bring on like different variety acts, like comedians, jugglers, and stuff like that uh, to come on. And I thought the ones on the Disney cruise were like really high quality. Um, what they did each night was, uh, or not each night, but. Th- three of the four nights i believe they had a different act come on like a professional comedian um and they would do like a main show in the walt disney theater and then later that night they would do like an adults only show at one of the uh the smaller bars and everything so that was kind of cool because it was like if you went to both shows you kind of got to see like a different side of the comedian because they would do obviously like more adult themed stuff at the adults only one um did it that get was, raunchy at all? It didn't. It didn't really get like raunchy. I would say to the level like of the ones that I saw on the Royal Cruises, but like it was the adult themed entertainment. Like there was, it was, it was adult themed for sure at some points. Like you know, there was there was language in it and stuff, and like sexual references at times too. So uh, wow, yeah, I, that's so, surprising and, for I don't know I. Because it being a Disney cruise, I don't know why. I just feel like that's very shocking, but exciting. It, yeah, it kind of was for me, too. Um, and I would say, so if you have a family, like, realize that, yes, it actually, some of the stuff on the on the cruise ship, if you go to the adults-only thing, is adult-themed. So, you know, <laughs> there were multiple times where we would go to, like, whatever the variety act there was that night, and there would be, like, people with families sitting in there, and they would kind of get started up, and you'd see the families walk out after that. So, it's <laughs> like, so I understand it is, a, it is a Disney cruise ship. And, like, nothing was, was horrible. I would say there was nothing that, like, you know, 
if like an eight year old kid had gone to, he would have been scarred and like his parents would have had to sit down and talk to him about it or anything like that. But, you know, it, it, it was occasionally adult themed. So just huh. keep... like PG 13 ish or yeah, higher. Yeah. Yeah. I would say like PG 13 ish, maybe a little worse than that at some points, but like nothing, nothing terrible. But, you know, hmm. it, it, they say it's adult themed, it's adult themed. So, uh, but probably the biggest thing of the entertainment, what I guess a lot of people are looking for when they go on the cruises, uh, are the musicals that they put on, which are just absolutely top notch. And that's coming from somebody that is really not that interested in musicals. But these were just fantastic. Uh, they did three of the Broadway style ones uh, throughout the ship. They did. Uh, like two original ones. One was called Wishes, and I know that kind of hurt because I was like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, and then one called Believe, and then they did Aladdin. Um, and I was surprised because I was really looking forward to Aladdin, and I and I still enjoyed it, but I actually think that I enjoyed the two other uh, original storyline ones better than I did Aladdin. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, they were all three of them were just great. Uh, again, the the level that the musicians were at and, and the actors and actresses were in, in these musicals was just absolutely incredible. Like this, the singing was just just top notch. Like some of the people, you know, like me and my wife would just like look over at each other and be like, like, holy crap, like these people could probably be, you know, on Broadway or doing something like you know, huge, just yeah. absolutely crazy talented. Uh, so I would say, def- you know, that was like the big entertainment thing on the three nights that they held them. Uh, if you go on a Disney Cruise, I would suggest do do not miss the musicals. Like, they, you know, they did at least two showings each day so that you could do it around whenever your dining was. Uh, and then Aladdin, they actually did three. They did a matinee. So you will have ample opportunity to see them. Do not miss them if you go on Disney Cruise. Nice. So, uh, probably the most fun I think I had, though, was when they did Pirates Night on the cruise. So, every night, on or one night on every cruise that Disney, I think on every cruise Disney does, they do a themed night, and sometimes it's Marvel, sometimes it's Star Wars, uh, but we had a pirates themed one, which was really cool. So this was also one of our port days. So it really starts once you get back on the ship. But they have like a stage show where you go out to the main pool where the funnel vision thing is, and they put on uh, a stage show and everything. But it's really cool, and I thought it was a nice touch that Disney did was that it's like there's actually kind of a plot line to it, and it wasn't just like hey everybody's gonna dress up like pirates tonight. Okay, cool, everyone go with that. Like there was like a storyline, like the ship was trying to get taken over by Captain Hook. So like Mickey had to round up you and everyone else to like come fight Captain Hook and all the other pirates and everything. So it was like, it was really cool. It was like a way to get the audience involved and, you know, actually have a a plot line to the theme and not just a, hey, dress like a pirate. Uh, Aren't you glad that your wife did the research? I am very glad, yes. <laughs> and so, real quick, do they tell you beforehand? Um, like, what day it is and all that? Yes, or do yeah, they just yeah. say, hey, you have a pirate <laughs> no, no, day? No, 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 no. They, you'll, you'll know just it's hope pirates. for the best. You dress like a pirate <laughs> every day, and one day you'll fit in. <laughs> no, so the, the, they tell you, you know, and it's on the activ- on the uh, the app and everything to tell you. Um and if you don't bring anything, like the the right before it starts, uh, the like your hostess will put a like they, they at least gave you a pirate bandana that you could wear if you didn't bring anything. Uh, That's nice. Yeah, it was. And like me and my wife, you know, dressed up for it and everything. But some of the people, like holy crap, they <laughs> went all out with this. Like I had like a pirate T-shirt on. Uh, and like a bandana and there were people in there with like 
full pirate garb. And I was like, oh, wow, the cast members are really good. Oh, that's not a cast member. I was like, wow. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was really cool. Um, dinner that night is pirate themed and everything. And then all your, uh, your servers dress up like pirates and everything. So that's really cool. They have a uh, bibbidi bobbidi boutique on the boat, and on Pirates Night, it's all pirate themed. So you, you, know, you can come and dress up, even if you, you know, if you forgot to bring pirate stuff. They sell plenty of pirate stuff that you can wear. Uh, but this is also when they do fireworks on the ship, which is just a really, really cool experience. Uh, so once everybody gets dressed up in the pirate garb, you come out and they do a second stage show at night. It's really fun, really interactive, like gets everyone to sing along and then at the end of it they do a fireworks show and granted like it is for disney standards it's a smaller fireworks display because you're on a boat but it's just it's incredible to be there on a cruise ship like as you're moving getting to see a fireworks show it was very very cool yeah that sounds pretty wild Mm -hmm. let's see uh so on ours we I guess to get into the actual kind of trip report real quick, uh, the ports of call were Tortola, St. Thomas, uh, and Castaway Key. Uh, Tortola and St. Thomas are both Virgin Islands. Tortola is British Virgin Islands, and St. Thomas is U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, I would say, you know, obviously your experiences there would be unique to what you decided to do uh disney offers a lot of excursions we didn't take part in any of those we just kind of went to each island and explored and did different things like that uh which was cool it was fun um the people that we ate dinner with usually took advantage of the excursions and they told us a lot about them and everything and they were all uh re- you know really impressed at the stuff that disney put on too uh, but it was fun, you know, we took it as kind of like an opportunity to, you know, get off the beaten path a little bit at some times and just do different things and really, you know, explore. So that was fun. And so you can kind of experience each one of those as, as you like. But uh, I'll say like, I, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with, with Disney coming there or the ports they choose or anything, but like the places at Tortola and St. Thomas were like very, very well maintained when you got off. You know, I've gone on cruises sometimes and like some of the ports you get off of, like it seems kind of sketchy and, you know, it's like you don't want, you know, you want to stick to the main like touristy areas and you don't want to get off of that. Uh, But for example, when we went to Tortola, like we rented a scooter and we just drove around the island and stuff. And like the whole island was just really, really nice. Like it, 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 you know, it, it was nice pretty much everywhere. So I thought that was really cool. Uh... But on the last night, we got to Castaway Key, which is Disney's private island, and it is just, it's its fantastic. Uh, for comparison, uh, the last Royal Cruise I went on, I went to their private island, and I can't remember the name of theirs, but I don't know. It seemed like it, I don't know, like Royal didn't exactly plan things out very well like Disney did. For example... On the Royal Cruise, on their private island, you they don't have a port on the island, so they actually drop anchor like half a mile offshore, and then you have to get on a ferry that runs back and forth from the island to the boat, which is okay when you're going over there because people are kind of going over there at different times, but when it's time for everyone to go back to the ship, everyone's trying to go back to the ship, and the little ferry can't handle but a certain number of people at a time. It's so like on the last trip that we went on, when it was time to go back, we ended up having to wait like over an hour just standing in line to get onto the ferry to take us back over to the boat, which really kind of sucked. Uh, Disney, yeah, that's the uh, the only cruise I've ever been on was Royal Caribbean. And as soon as you started talking about it, I was just like, oh, yeah, that was really stupid to have to wait yeah. to go back to the boat. Mm hmm. But uh, Castaway Key, Disney has its own dock. They pull right up. They open up all the gangways, and you just go off, and it's awesome. Um, Castaway Key, I it was, I really really enjoyed Tortola and St. Thomas. Uh, it's kind of like more adventurous things to do, and Castaway Key was a lot of fun. Uh, and I think it was probably my my favorite 
my favorite uh, port that we did, even though it wasn't, you know, it's not really a port to call because it's, you know, it's Dizzy's Island, but uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Great theming. Uh, if you really want to look into it, there's like, like hidden touches and storylines and everything behind all of it. But as far as the island itself, one thing was one, I was surprised at how big of an island was. Like it was way, way bigger than, uh, um, than Royals Island. But it was also like so much of it was still like natural, like huge sections of the island were. Um, so, for example, like we rented bikes and it was cool. They had like a bike trail that you go on around the island. And when you got like halfway through the trail, you would go up in this lookout tower and you could look out over the island and see back where the cruise ship was. And it's like so much of the island had not been built up yet. Like it was just it, it was just like a natural island out in the middle of the Caribbean, which is really cool to see that like Disney hadn't made a huge impact on it. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as the island itself, like beautiful beaches, tons of like themed bars, slides and stuff you can go on. Uh, another cool thing is like they have a tram that runs around the island. And honestly, like most of the island, it wasn't really that far to walk to, but it was nice that they had a tram that they ran around. Uh, so you didn't have to walk. The one place that you couldn't walk to, though, is they had an, a, an adults-only beach, which was really cool, too. Again, you know, as I've said multiple times, like, this, this is not a cruise ship that is only catered to families or people with children. Like, you could go as an adult by yourself, as a couple, whatever, and I think have a better time than on another cruise ship. But the, uh, the adults only beach was like incredible. Uh, it had its own restaurant. Um, oh, the other thing too, when you get off at Castaway Key, they provide you a free, it's like a, they do a, a cookout and it's like really nice. It was some of the best food that I had on the whole cruise. And that's saying a lot because all the food was incredible. But it was like, it had so much different stuff. Like you get grilled ribeye steaks, mahi mahi, uh, it's like jerk chicken and stuff, like all this different stuff. And again, all included, uh, another thing that like on Royal you had to pay for, which was really nice. But uh, the beaches on Castaway Key are just beautiful. There's like little, there's a ton of different excursions I know you could do there, like parasailing, they have like a stingray encounter, you can rent jet skis, just tons of different stuff. But it was the last day of the trip and like we used it as a really nice, just relaxing day to lay on the beach. Um, and that was great. So, uh, so yeah, that, uh, pretty much wrapped up the ports of call. Like I said, you know, it, it would really depend on what you decided to do with each one. So I didn't want to dive too much into that. Uh, but they had a lot for you to do at each one, I'm assuming. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And like, and, um, you know, you could go through if you wanted to do excursions through Disney. Uh, and it, it it's nice because, you know, you don't have to worry about planning your day out and making sure you get back to the ship on time and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, Disney's handling it, so it's it's all going to be planned out for you, so it's nice. Uh, you know, that being said, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, but, you know, it's just, I, it wasn't, it was very comparable to the, to the type of prices you pay for excursions on Royal or Carnival or any other ship like that. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and then one last section before I really wrap things up with a final thing uh, is I just made a couple of notes of just like little touches that Disney did, you know, that is like just they did better or that was nice to be on the cruise ship. Uh, one, the pillow or the chocolates that they leave you on the pillow, uh, they're Ghirardelli chocolates. So I'm like, that's nice. Um <laughs> This wasn't even a thing that I think that Disney did good. It was a thing that when I went on Royal, it really irked me was that you had to, <laughs> you had to check out towels at the pool on Royal. It's like they were so concerned that you were going to steal a towel or something. So you would have to like go up there, scan your, your card key, uh, and then they'd give you a towel. And then when you were done with it, you had to come scan it back in. And it was like a $10 charge for every towel that you didn't check back in on Royal. Like on Disney is just like, there's towels everywhere. Just like grab a towel, 
throw it in the, the bin when you're done with it. So that was like, nice. Like, people don't go on cruises to steal towels. I know, right? There's a, hey, look, I spent thousands of dollars on this cruise, but you know what? I'm going to make up for it. I'll never have to buy towels again. Right? <laughs> well, I feel like Disney does similar things like that at the resorts, too. Like, when you go there and they have the racks of towels that you can just take and then throw back in the other bins. Mm-hmm. So maybe that that is just like a thing that Disney just doesn't care I about. It's not. Maybe they just got good prices on towels. They got a good towel supplier. <laughs> but either way, that was that was one thing that I noticed. Um, I one of the biggest things though is that it's like the Disney community is on the boat, and it's cool because you know not to the point where it's like intrusive. And even I would say you could go on on a Disney cruise like not being a Disney fan and still really enjoy it because. A lot of the Disney stuff was really subtle, but you know, if you were, if you are a part of the Disney community, and I'm assuming if you're listening to this podcast, you are like, it's really cool. Uh, so like one thing is a lot of people like decorate the doors to their, their state rooms and they'll put like, like magnets and stuff on it and everything. And a lot of people would put out, uh, like a thing with pins. So like you go by and just trade on their boards and stuff while you were there. So that was really cool. That is really yeah. neat. Wow. They're uh, very trusting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's pin trading on the boat too. We were really excited because we had been working on a pin set for like six months and we could not find the last pin for it. And we finally found it when the cast members had it on the boat. And I was nice. really glad that I brought my pins because we were finally able to complete that set. Uh, and then one night, like they had a pin trading event too, where you could come and they had a lot of cast members set up where you could trade, but you could also trade with other people too. So Obviously, being a pin trader like that was a really, really uh, nice thing for them to have. Uh, oh. And then I guess just a random thing: the uh, the donuts at the buffet are Krispy Kreme donuts. So that's Yum. really nice. And the other cool thing is like they don't even advertise that. Like my wife just happened to notice. She was like, I went by and they were like restocking the donuts and they were like pulling all of them out of Krispy Kreme boxes. And I was like, oh, that's nice. So <laughs> that was cool. What a thing to realize. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Uh-huh. Well, it sounds like you had a blast and I'm super jealous. Yeah, it was. Like I said, it was, it was great. Um, so I guess the last thing is like the elephant in the room when it comes to doing a Disney cruise compared to another cruise is the price and whether or not it's worth it. So I'll say from what we were looking at and, you know, comparing it to doing something else, uh, you're probably going to spend roughly like at least 50% more on a Disney cruise. And that's probably a low estimate year from most of the stuff we were looking at. Disney's probably gonna be twice as much as a comparable uh, like Royal or Carnival cruise, which is steep. I'm not gonna lie, like it's uh, you know it's kind of hard to swallow if you're if you're just looking at prices. But I'll say that Disney went above and beyond on so so much stuff, and it was so great to have like the the level of service that you get from disney that you know was even like any cruise ship you go on if you've never been on one like you get incredible levels of service like you know any of the royal ones i would say like you got disney level service on on a royal cruise but like disney cruises went even a step above that and it was just really great uh you know everybody's super friendly super helpful and everything just very interactive uh the the entertainment crew that, that put on all the shows and the trivias and all of that kind of stuff were just they really really made it special um and it was just it, it was great so i would say that for for most people if you're if you're a disney fan and you are planning this as like as a as a big vacation like going on a cruise is your big vacation um it, it's worth it by far like no questions asked um i think even if you're not really a big disney fan the level of service the 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 f- food that you're getting i thought the dining was was well above it uh and the the level of entertainment that you get on the boat is still still going to be worth the price 
uh, being so close to Port Canaveral, it's, I know, again, I'm kind of in like an interesting like area that not a lot of people like, or they're not going to experience this like I do, but being so close is like a lot of times, you know, the cruise is like the kind of just the cheap, oh, okay, you know, maybe we can like, you know, in a month or two, we can plan to go for a weekend trip on a cruise or something like that. And for that, like, yeah, I probably wouldn't do a Disney cruise because of the cost. Um, you know, and if you just want to go on like a booze cruise or something for, uh, you know, a couple days, or you're really more concerned about like getting to the ports of call and doing that kind of stuff, then, you know, maybe the Disney cruise isn't worth the price. But for me, I really enjoy the days on the boat and all the entertainment options and just, just Disney did such a good job at it. So I think far and above it's worth the extra cost to do a Disney cruise. And we had an absolutely incredible time. And any Disney fans listening to this, I would say, uh, if you're planning a trip to the parks, um, hey, love the parks, definitely. But uh, if you're the kind of family that gets to go to the parks a lot, and you do that relatively often, look into doing a cruise. It's a different experience. You still get the majority of the Disney magic, uh, but it's unique. So look into it. So we've lost Brian to the cruise life. That's what he's saying. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely not lost. I, you know, it's it's different, um, but it is, it, it's great. I, I, I will definitely love going to the parks and Obviously, because being a local, uh, going to the parks is a lot cheaper than going on a Disney cruise. I will still be spending most of my time in the parks, but uh, but yeah, we were already like as we were heading home, talking about like when we could plan our next one. So uh, nice. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, do you have a favorite thing that you did? I have to know if there's something that like. You got off the cruise and you're like, man, I can't believe we did that. Oh man, um, like I said, the the shows. I was, you know, I expected the the entertainment to be good, and everyone had talked about, you know, how great the stage shows were. But I have never really been a big musical fan, so I wasn't, you know didn't have that high of expectations for it but they i mean I, I was blown away with how good they were and even the ones like they they would give you a quick synopsis of, of the plots of uh you know some of the original shows and like reading some of them i was like oh my god it's gonna be so cringy uh and then going to them i was like wow that was that was incredible so uh i would say definitely check them out even if you don't like musicals nice so, uh, did you have any questions for Brian about his trip, Beth? Uh, I'm pretty convinced. <laughs> yeah, I think I am too. I don't, I don't know. I may have to start looking into it. Um, so let me propose something to you guys real quick while we're, we're talking about this. We're at, for this episode so far, an hour and 17 minutes. <laughs> wow, I talked <laughs> a lot. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad that you had so much detail. Yeah, and that's definitely something that people have wanted to hear. So what do you say we wrap this week up, and then after we're done this, just quickly do the bracket and the listener feedback that we've got as a short episode, and I'll put that out while I'm away so we don't miss a week. Cool. Sounds good to me. Cool. So we'll see you guys next time. Um, I know I promised a lot for this episode. I don't think we really plan to have that much to talk about, but... We are going to wrap up the bracket next week. Um, I will be away in Walt Disney World, and this is going to be a pre-recorded episode, so this is going to be uh, us not missing a week. Woo! <laughs> then that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for joining us again on another episode of the Station 71 podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts from. If you want to be a part of the show, reach out to us on our website at www.station71podcast.com where you can find links to all of our social media, our email address, and our brand new Google Voice line where you can leave us a voice message. Have anything you want to hear us talk about? We'd be happy to discuss that on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed your ride, and we'll see you real soon. Please stand clear 
of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.